Hi everybody, my name is István Zoltán Szabó, but please call me C. I'm a senior technical writer at Remotes, which is a classroom consultancy with the offices in Belgium and Hungary. Three years ago, we uh, started to we, we specialize in building Drupal based developer portals for clients all over the world and uh, help them to start, manage, and maintain uh, a successful API program. Since then, our content team has been doing extensive research uh, in this field, uh, as well as creating um, various types of documentation for developer portals. We've been working with Apache, now part of Google, uh, and together we designed some really cool portals. Promovix built the developer portal of APNO and Shutterstock, for example. Uh, we won the Dutch Special Awards with the uh, ABNO Blue Portal uh, in the best site of the year and uh, in corporate categories, and then followed uh, in the European Special Award uh, in the corporate category with the same portal. Uh, yeah, Special Awards. <coughs> At Splash Awards, uh, the best Drupal project of the year I awarded. So I have a, I had an academic background. Uh, I focused on uh, the philosophy of technology. I had a PhD and uh, I have a PhD in comparative literature. Then uh, four years ago, I joined the wonderful economics team, and uh, that's how I became a technical writer. It is honest, we are a really field for me because it's always something new to learn in this field. Uh, that's the reason why I want these to be at this conference and, uh, and uh, for the opportunity to make this presentation for you all. In this talk, I would like to focus on a specific type of API documentation uh, that is targeting various stakeholders of the APIs. It's a subtype of uh, supporting documentation that I have titled um, API description. Uh, this is not uh, this is not the best name uh, for this documentation title. That's why I would like to ask some help uh, from you at the end of my presentation and uh, try to find a better name together. So first, I will uh, talk briefly about Dev portals in general and explain how we understand them, uh, what are they for. And then uh, we will check the documentation uh, types uh, that are relevant in the developer portal so we can situate the API description uh, doc type better in its own context. Uh, after that, we define uh, the role of the API description pages. What are they exactly? Uh, who is the target audience of these pages? What information uh, do they contain? And so on. And then uh, finally, I'd like to present a possible uh, to write uh, API description content and show a um, template as an example, as a demonstration. But uh, first of all, I'd like to emphasize that there is no one static approach to writing this, uh, this content. So please keep in mind that uh, I welcome any suggestions and uh, or additions to this presentation may inspire uh, after, after this talk. So, what is a developer portal? There is no, I believe there is no clear cut definition for a developer portal, but if I had to sum up uh, in one sentence, that I would say a developer portal uh, is a place for all the stakeholders of your APIs uh, to assist in achieving their business goals. A developer portal uh, exposes various types of documentation, API documentation, of course contains news about uh, the API program, release notes, um, pricing information, if the APIs are monetized, uh, a forum maybe to share the experience or uh, to discuss emerging problems or questions. So the developer portal is uh, the goal of your API program and a strategic tool to make it uh, make the success. We can differentiate various portal types uh, depending on our point, point of view. Now we have uh, two groups for discussion uh, internal portals, of course, and external portals. 
internal quota as well, but particularly we're going to develop for the members of the company who owns the portal. Uh, they make the work uh, and the life of the developers easier, as uh, in my ideal case, uh, they contain all the information uh, about the APIs that are available you know, uh, within the company. External portals, so that's, uh, that was the internal portals. External portals are public facing entities uh, where developers, after proper authentication, uh, can try out APIs, uh, can reach the API documentation or subscribe for an API service uh, provided by the company who owns the portal, which owns the portal. Maybe the most important difference is uh, in their budget. As potential profit centers, uh, external APIs. Uh, can afford to invest a lot more money uh, in documentation or UX-driven improvements. Uh, internal portals uh, rarely have uh, this kind of opportunity. However, good documentation and uh, recurring page patterns um, make a great difference in uh, developing experience even in uh, internal portals. So what kind of uh, content can be on that portal? Basically, there are two types of documentation. Uh, on the portal, reference docs and supporting docs. Uh, first, the reference documentation, which contains uh, all the technical information about the API endpoints. Uh, reference documentation refers to the, to the spec, the API spec, Swagger, Grammar, um, API Blueprint, and so on. It is a concise material containing all the necessary information uh, required. Uh, to work with the API, with details about the main functions, uh, classes, return types, params, uh, arguments, uh, and so on. It is deeply technical and targets developers, but developer portals are more than uh, reference docs. Sporting documentation is a broader term uh, that includes concepts, how to guides, tutorials, glossaries. Uh, FAQ items, API description pages, and more that help uh, improve understanding the APIs. Most APIs rely on uh, reference docs, and we believe that's a mistake. So that's why we started to recommend the use of um, a short introduction for every API when, when building developer portals uh, for our customers. And that is what we call uh, API description. API description exists to make it easier uh, to decide which API to use. Uh, when a technical writer starts to develop documentation, the first question is who's the target audience? So maybe uh, it's a logical uh, uh, step to answer this question first. The target audience of the API description pages are heterogeneous. Uh, it is not only for developers who actually uh, integrating, uh, correction, integrating the API, but for decision makers too, who uh, decide which API uh, will be used during the project. If there is only the reference documentation available, then a manager or a, or a decision maker with less technical knowledge uh, becomes frustrated and uh, leaves the portal, maybe uh, try to find another solution from another provider. Uh, with better description, even, even if the API itself is le less great. So that's why it is critical to address uh, this audience on the portal, and this is exactly what API description pages do. On the other hand, uh, these descriptions are great for developers too, because they can get uh, basic information about uh, the API without the need of technical deep diving. API description pages give an answer to the question, is this something that I'm really looking for? So uh, these pages create a better developer experience when a, a dev tries to find uh, the proper API. The API description explains uh, the API's most important functions and features, show the benefit, uh, benefits of using the API, informs the audience, uh, informs the audience about basic requirements, uh, access requirements, for example, gives a, uh, gives a brief example uh, of the most common fields of operation, 
and uh, offers um, options to step further. For this reason, API descriptions are something between technical description and uh, marketing material, and uh, of course they provide some kind of context uh, to the API. As I've already said, uh, we developed a method uh, of writing such content, uh, which I would like to present to you in my remaining time. First of all, it is important to keep the description of the various APIs consistent throughout uh, the portal. Uh, when users need the same uh, structure of information while browsing uh, these pages, uh, they will feel comfortable, which creates trust and naturally improves uh, the DX uh, developer experience. That's why we created a template that contains all the other sections that we consider important uh, about an API and creates, also creates an environment for technical writers uh, and help them to keep the content consistent because they, uh, they see uh, the, the same patterns over and over again. Of course, the technical writer has to get this information somehow before the writing process actually begins. In an ideal case, the solution is a deep interview with the developer who thoroughly understands the API. But uh, let's be honest, um, technical writers um, rarely have that kind of luxury. Uh, in most cases, they need to get to know the API the hard way and turn to the reference documentation, to the JSON file, and try to find out uh, uh, the functions based on the reference documentation. Anyway, if the writer has a fair understanding uh, of an API, then it's time to use the template and uh, put in form paper. <laughs> I always forgot about this slide. Uh, so our template contains 11 sections. In every section, uh, there are writing prompts in brackets. The technical writer's job is to replace all the bracketed prompts with content that's specific to a given API. When the writer uh, has replaced all the bracketed prompts, they will have uh, provided basic information about uh, the API that has others to use uh, the API. So these are the uh, main uh, sections, sections, and uh, now we take a closer look at them one by one. So API name, of course that's the first, usually pretty straightforward, and it comes from the API provider, so there is no need from uh, the technical writer to figure out or uh, come up with something. Uh, the API name will be the title of the API description document and eventually the API uh, description page, the web page. Uh, I made up a mock API uh, as an example for this presentation, inspired by the first API movie uh, by Ridley Scott. So that's why uh, the API name is most strong API in this case. Uh, that's the rest of the uh, first, uh, from the first movie. So that's the first uh, section. The second is uh, API description, I mean description. It's a short one or maximum two sentence long description of the API. Very often it comes from the, uh, comes from the uh, API uh, definition file. However, the technical writer can extend it uh, as it's necessary. So here, uh, at the top of the page, uh, on the slide, you can see the writing prompt in brackets, one sentence description of the API, and the actual uh, description is, with no strong API, you are able to collect private and passenger information about the commercial towing vehicle, no strong. The next section is the version number, which is a must-have, because uh, it's an important factor of uh, identification and uh, it comes from the uh, specification file uh, also. Category and tags, I often use the, I always uh, use um, the portal testing system to make it uh, easier 
uh, to search and filter the APIs. So, for example, here, category is cargo and uh, commerce, and then uh, there will be a, uh, maybe a description page for most of our API on the, the portal, and when the user clicks on the category, for example, the cargo category, the system automatically uh, filters and uh, displays to uh, the, the APIs. The APIs belongs to this uh, category. And of course, tags, uh, which good for SEO, uh, so it is great to, to have uh, expressions that uh, describe the given API uh, to the API description page. The next section that is, uh, is benefits. Benefits are short explanations on how the user uh, can benefit uh, from using the API. They reinforce the main uh, function of the API that is uh, mentioned in the uh, description or stated in the description and at the same time uh, also provide additional information about the main advantages. Typically, you, we use uh, three uh, benefits on per API description page. A benefit item uh, consists of two parts, a title and a short description. Uh, these benefits uh, are targeting both of our uh, audiences, so both developers and uh, decision makers. What is it? Section. The section names the type of the API, whether it's uh, REST or so, and this tells what it allows the users to do. Uh, there is also further information uh, on what the user needs to get started, uh, list limitations, restrictions, if any, uh, and looks like, looks like it's... Why use it uh, section? Uh, it contains a list of uh, the most common fields of usage, show use cases, uh, with links for more information, and causes of uh, tips for use. Um, I try to think about the most common and highest impact uh, outcomes and uh, write them down in a simple and easy to understand way. In every case, there is a lot to say, a lot to tell uh, about an API. However, the less is more principle applies here as well. So I, uh, I use a qualitative list describing the most typical cases and that hyperlinks to that, which lead to uh, additional uh, or any other kind of uh, supporting documentation on another page. So developers can, or uh, decision makers uh, or users can check it if they, they want. Very likely, this section will be the longest one uh, of the page, so it is a good idea to add some visuals uh, to break uh, the monotony of, of the text. How it works and how to use section. A how it works section is a brief explanation uh, of the machinery behind the API, what kind of technology is used, um, what are the technical prerequisites of using the API. These questions are addressed here. Uh, reading the API spec is not enough to write this section, so uh, developer uh, assistance is unavoidable here. Uh, if the portal has a fair conceptual documentation, then uh, we can uh, leave this section out. Uh, in the cases of internal portals, it is seldom to, to have a need uh, for this section, so that's why I didn't feature it uh, on, my, uh, on my example. How to use. It's a short introduction text with a link to the Getting Started documentation. Uh, this section is not a full step-by-step -step guide, it only provides a general overview of usage. The function of this section is uh, rather to show how, how easy it is to get it started uh, with the API than to provide a full guide uh, for it. Uh, I try to keep it short and uh, don't include more than three or four uh, steps here. And the uh, most important the link to the getting started documentation to offer something to, uh, to step further. Uh, finally, requirements and, uh, and pricing. 
requirements uh, section refers to assess uh, access requirements, which might include the developer account, uh, user, password, uh, pass, or or uh, authentication token, or any other kind of uh, credential. The requirement list here uh, should be comprehensive. Pricing in the case of external portals it is uh, crucial to have this section if the APIs are monetized. Uh, of course, uh, in the case of internal portals, there is no need to include this. So, as you can see, some of these sections uh, might not be relevant or important for every single API. Uh, in this case, you can leave them out. And if you consider uh, something else important, uh, you can add more uh, sections or uh, expand the sections, as you can see if it, the point is to keep the content consistent. After the API -like description is completed, a thorough review by a developer is crucial, especially the documentation based on uh, scrutinizing the reference talks and that's uh, on an interview. Or, uh, you can put it online as it is, and uh, the developer will, uh, a developer will uh, fix it within a minute or point out to your mistake uh, within 10 minutes. Uh, that's an other solution. Besides the text stream content, it is also important to place call to action buttons uh, to the different sections, which leads to getting started page tutorials. Uh, reference documentation or, uh, or any other relevant page because API description pages are aggregators too uh, that make uh, all the relevant information available uh, in one place about, about an API. So I would like to show you something. So that's how an API description page looks like. One of my colleagues, Dora, uh, designed a page, uh, description, API description page for, for my uh, mock API. So as you can see, this is the name of the API with the version number and the description, categories and tags, and in the header, there are call to action buttons, uh, which lead to the getting started or the reference documentation. Nice picture on the uh, right. This is the benefits section. Three benefits title and description. What is its section with the uh, call to actions? Why use it? The how to use guide, which is not a real guide. The requirement list, and finally, of course, a request access uh, option to, uh, to have the API keys. Okay. So, uh, API description on internal portals. In the cases of external portals, uh, the importance of API description is evident, but uh, they can be helpful uh, for internal portals too. When a, uh, when a company has a lot of internal APIs and there is a, a possibility to propose new APIs, then uh, API description pages will help uh, with orientation and information gathering for developers to try to, who are try to, trying to find an optimal solution uh, for a specific uh, problem. If they need to search and scrutinize the reference documentation uh, of all the potential APIs, they likely will prefer something that they are already uh, know, uh, even if it's not the best for the uh, for the for the particular problem they have. The other case when the company has only a few uh, internal APIs, in this case, then developing. API description uh, does not need serious effort. Uh, 
still it can greatly improve developers' experience as developers can have a quick overview about the main functions uh, without the technical detail, and of course uh, they are great for uh, onboarding. They are great as onboarding materials as well. There is one more thing to discuss. As I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my presentation, API description is not the best thing for this documentation tag because uh, users uh, sometimes think it is equivalent with reference docs. Uh, I have asked a couple of developers uh, which could be an improvement uh, and have three different uh, versions of your for your review. The first is API description, so the, the original, so-called original one, uh, API overview, and API summary. And of course, if there is any better idea, which I think uh, there will be, please, uh, after the presentation, uh, share, share with me, because I'm really curious. But now, who votes for the first one? Okay, thanks. Who votes for API overview, the second one? <coughs> okay. And who votes for API summary? Okay, we have a winner. API overview, apparently. Uh, yes, the, I had some images and screenshots. Thank you, thank you for your uh, thank you for your attention and your time. Uh, you have uh, you can you can uh, subscribe to our developer portal mailing list uh, via this link. Uh, it's a weekly newsletter. Uh, the news about our uh, research and the results of our research, uh, everything about uh, developer portals and the API program and the API documentation. <laughs>